The Lightning Shaman is quite a spectacle. Leap from target to target while striking foes with an insane amount of unrelenting lightning bolts and no regard for mana. The Wolves, which can also be transformed to Squirrels if you prefer, provide even more lightning damage to the build. This onslaught is an absolute sight to behold, and the insane movement speed provided while buffs are active make for an incredibly fun build to play as well. There are no build defining items for this build, only those that make it stronger, meaning you can start using the build from level 1 or pick it up at the end game. Whatever you prefer, the choice is yours. So let's go ahead and work our way through some gameplay. We're going to use Fury Leap to traverse through the map. Top of that, we're going to go ahead and use our Tem Strike basically to chop everything down. When we get stronger health enemies, you can use the Gathering Storm as well, and this is going to proc some Storm Stacks, which we'll discuss in a few minutes in the video. As you can see, everything is basically just going down fairly quickly. Leap from pack to pack, and you can keep this uptime going really well. You notice that there's a number of stacks growing. These are those Storm Stacks, and these are going to proc automatically, casting down the Lightning Bolts that you see cascading everywhere on the screen. Also having the ability to cast Storm Totem automatically, but you can certainly leap to a target, drop your Storm Totem when the pack is sizable, chop them down, and rinse and repeat. This build basically has no fear of ever running out of mana, which is absolutely fantastic. The way we're creating this amazing display is by using Tempest Strike as our main ability. Tempest Strike is going to do a few things for us. It's going to expend Storm Stacks when we use Tempest Strike, and we'll talk more about Storm Stacks in just a minute. We'll disable Frigid Tempest and Wind Tempest. That will leave only Thunder Tempest having the ability to proc, and this is the Lightning ability. In addition to that, we'll be able to trigger this on our Storm Totems. If you happen to have a Storm Carved Testament, well, this has the ability to summon a Storm Totem automatically, meaning you can just simply attack and periodically place these totems, which will then get the benefit we talked about. It's not required and it doesn't define the build in any way. You can use another relic in place until you find one of these. As for the storm totem, we're going to increase the chance that it has to shock. We're going to get increased movement speed. An additional 40% is absolutely massive when the totem shocks an enemy. The benefit for this is we'll get 45% increased lightning damage for a period of time after it deals that. We can essentially have 100% uptime on this while the totems are active. You and your minions will gain increased melee lightning damage as well, and it will have a lightning nova when the totem dies. Your wolves will have a chance to proc storm bolts whether that's on hit or when they get hit so the more wolves we have the faster attack speed they have the more of these storm bolts we'll be able to get storm bolt is going to be a lightning spell ability and this is going to do a fairly large amount of damage every time it procs we can further increase the chance to get these storm bolts to proc when the wolves get hit and increase the spell damage they deal more lightning damage for the wolves and a great amount of survivability by getting increased health per point of attunement on top of the damage they receive and this build is capable of pushing attunement really high so let's talk about the two terms storm stacks and storm bolts both of these have been mentioned at this point without much description of what they do. The recently reworked Gathering Storm will generate storm stacks when you hit one enemy, and you'll periodically expend these as storm bolts, dealing damage to the enemies around you. By default, this is a lightning skill. It does have the capability to be transformed into physical or cold if you want to play a variation of this, but we don't have to alter it for this particular setup. We'll have chances to cast additional storm bolts through some of the talents, but most importantly, we're going to have the capabilities of gaining haste. When we use a companion ability, our storm stacks will actually trigger storm bolts faster. Pair that with Friends of the Tempest. If you have one to 15 storm stacks our minions lightning skills which our wolves will have and also our totems will have have the ability to grant us storm stacks meaning we can basically put a stack up and then generate these passively when you're looking to burst an enemy you'll want to open up with a couple of these gathering storm attacks before you start spamming the tempest strike as soon as you have a couple of stacks your companions will essentially generate the remainder of them for you and you'll be able to keep those up fairy leap will be the traversal skill and we'll actually get survivability with this as well because it's going to make us immune to damage while leaping we'll convert this to lightning so that we get additional storm bolts along the way and they're going to get increased frequency and additional spell damage to boot. Speaking of spell damage, I find Tempest Maw to be the best in slot weapon for this particular build. These are relatively easy to acquire, so hopefully you can pick one up. If not, you can certainly use a suitable Exalted in its place. Look for things that are going to boost your lightning damage, elemental damage, or even your lightning penetration are all very strong. I did experiment with Colinvar's Claim in the main hand, and that's because we can wield one of these and still use Tempest Maw in the offhand. Overall, I found it less effective because it lowered the damage that we did with the Gathering Storm and the Tempest Strike abilities. So let's take a look at some of the items we're using this build to help further its potential. As mentioned, increased elemental damage, increased spell damage, even getting frailty on hit is very nice. We have a lot of attack speed with this build, and this helps reduce the damage that we take. Attunement is an incredibly strong stat. This ring happened to roll additional strength as well, which isn't too bad considering we also get plus two to all attributes on the implicit. Overall, strength is going to increase our melee damage and reduce the damage we take through armor. On this particular belt, we're getting increased lightning damage along with a lot of health for this build, and you'll notice that all these items so far have additional resistance in the suffixes as well. A well-rolled Fauna the Erased, again a benefit, but not required for the build. This one has increased spell damage and additional health. So we have a pair of boosts, granting additional attunement, increased 
movement speed, more armor, and a little bit of health regeneration. The health regeneration is the worst stat on this pair. Howl of the West Wind is a great pickup if you're fortunate enough to find one. Otherwise, you can look for something that boosts the plus skills to your wolves or even to Tempest Strike. Both of those would be great options. West Wind will grant additional chance for the wolves to retaliate with Lightning Strike, another form of lightning damage. Increased minion movement just, just gives them additional uptime on their targets. The 45% chance to shock on melee hit and the additional lightning damage is going to be a great combination. You're going to debuff the enemies while dealing increased damage to them. And 36% chance on hit with lightning skills to grant additional lightning damage to our wolves. Of course, that's benefiting the build as well. A couple of strong idle choices are going to involve increasing your spell damage. You can look for this when you have an active totem since we'll have incredibly high uptime on the totem or just increased spell damage plus increased minion spell damage is going to benefit your wolves lightning abilities and your storm totems. Getting resist on your blessings is going to be a big increase to this particular build. That way you can fill out the idle slots with things other than resist in basically every slot. If you're looking for a pair of gloves, Avarice is a fantastic choice. This is actually a quest reward very early on in the game, so you can pick these up and all of the lightning damage that you deal will essentially have a portion of it returned as health, dramatically increasing your sustain. Woven Flesh is a very easily acquired body armor, and you could replace this with a rare or an exalted item as well. Look for something that has plus to some of the skills that you happen to be using in this build. However, the Woven Flesh drops from the final boss in Fall of the Outcast, which is the very first monolith that you'll encounter, and you can repeat these monoliths over and over until you acquire the item. This is a really easy way to get 100% critical strike avoidance with just a single piece. Having played many different builds in the last epoch, I would rate this as one of the more enjoyable builds within the game. If for some reason you do encounter issues with mana sustain, be mindful that Gathering Storm has no mana cost. With this setup, you can use that to keep some damage going and any health leech that you might have. As mentioned in the intro, it is possible to use squirrels with this build as well, but the additional minions mean you'll need more mana sustain for their procs. The biggest negative of this build is that it does lack a little bit of single target damage. Well, let's talk a little bit on how you can scale that damage in order to make this character push further if that's your interest. To scale the damage in this build, look for items that boost lightning damage. Although your minions deal damage on their own, the bolts they proc scale off your own lightning damage and it's more effective. Overall, this is still a work in progress and I'll keep the link in the video description updated whenever possible so that you can see any changes that have been made as time goes on. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.